Hi. So my name is Kevin. Um, I've done a few videos on Matrix Blackboard before, and I think it's long overdue since I did another one. So this video basically is talk about where I've been, um, how I disappeared for a while, where did I go, and what happened. Uh, most people have been asking me in comments, hey Kevin, where have you been? Then sending me lots of emails. Thank you for the emails, by the way, for those who have been sending me very good emails. Been asking about uh, what I've been doing, what are the new things you've been doing in Black Box, and all this thing about the Matrix Black Box. Is it still there or what happened? So I'm here to clarify that. And I'm also going to share with uh, many of you who are going to be aspiring young hardware engineers and enthusiasts on the road on hardware engineering and just how interesting it is. So uh, a while back, about in 2016, yeah, around that time, I was involved in a lot of things about the black box. Uh, that time we are doing tracking systems specifically just for, for laptops. And I wanted to scale it further. So I decided to find myself some good uh, investors around the community as well now to do the scaling up of the project and so that we are able to meet demand as uh, years progressed. More people and more people were asking, hey, I need a tracker for this, I need a tracker for that, uh, and what can I do with, uh, with, uh, with your black box? Can we become partners, resellers? All these inquiries came coming in. So it was high time that we, get, uh, we got ourselves uh, investors at that time so that we could be able to scale up to the magnitude in which the demand was rising. I mean, I couldn't afford to make all tracking system by myself. Uh, that was going to be quite a ridiculous challenge. So I decided um, to go to India. I was to pick between India and China, but I decided to go with India so that they can uh, work with us to work with their Chinese uh, factory counterparts uh, since we found very good guys in India. And I must say, when I was in India, it was quite amazing. The trip was just uh, amazing, amazing. I got to learn a lot about manufacturing process, the process, the process in which you create hardware uh, at home is way different from when you're doing large scale manufacturing. Um, it, it was quite interesting to learn that when I was in India. Um, I also got to see the many differences and varieties of uh, workarounds that are there. Uh, the sourcing of materials that are going to be important in uh, uh, bringing the parts together, uh, creating bill of materials for the, 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 the entire system, uh, bringing in uh, hardware and software specifications down to the details of uh, everything, which was quite a lot of work. The entire task cost me about two or three years of uh, work, just being there, coming back, setting up discussions, going up and down. And don't, it dawned on me why it's so tricky and hard to bring new hardware innovations, especially from Africa, ground up and, and you scale them up. Um, it's quite a, a process. And, and, and uh, after the back and forth, of course, we also found other options that were starting to come up. Like uh, there was this option called Risk Five, which was an upcoming way in which you just do the design work, and then Risk Five is able to give you um, a platform kind of that is able to develop your own hardware as a designer perspective, not just from the, uh, so that you don't have to worry about the materials and all that. We found that route is still in progress and it hasn't been finalized yet. It's still in talks. So we had to kind of abandon it. But uh, I just want to let you know that it's out there. It's a very nice thing. It's called Risk 5. 
um, I got to do that. I got to enjoy that privilege of trying out that route and see where it, it will take us. I um, also got to go and explore the route to China, of course. Uh, in Kenya, we've been getting good relations with the Chinese, especially when it comes to this new Silk Road that they're working on. And we got to start talking to them, you see. We, and uh, the, the manufacturing process in China is a bit tricky because of the language issue. There's a lot of language barrier that goes on between there. So by the time we tell them, uh, the engineers, no, change this part only and not this other part. Some words have fallen out of translation. You have to get yourself always there so that you can deal with them in real time if not Skyping every time in real time, which became another hurdle. So I realized uh, the best way to go around building hardware is manufacture the damn thing yourself. Just say it black and white, uh, no pun intended. Uh, but if, if, if we were able to do hardware manufacturing in Kenya <coughs> on, on, on PCBs specifically, it would be just amazing. So I decided to open a PCB manufacturing company here in Kenya. And again, the process was quite interesting. Uh, we got to have uh, so many things have to be set up. Raw materials, getting them here. Some of them, we already have them. It's just that they've not been processed. Uh, others uh, had to be processed outside and then we were brought in so that we can work on them. And we have the other big part, which is uh, dealing with lack of skilled manpower, where you have to train everybody and everything on everything again. Now you have to train someone from scratch, what's a PCB, how to make one, uh, various components during schematics coming down to it. So that uh, whenever you want to do iterations, it becomes much more easier. So training manpower costs you another one to three months just training them and, and dealing with that part of training. Of course, as you're doing all this, you have to understand that you're still doing business and at the same time, you have to keep the business afloat. So you have to still do your sales and you still have to, to do uh, kind of a balance of, of the two of learning at the same time as uh, developing your, your hardware. So, the matrix black box had to go a lot of iteration back and forth, checking here, working with these guys, stopping there for a while, learning from what we have just done with those guys, uh, getting the feedback, reviewing it, what are we doing right, what are we doing wrong. And uh, the entire process just uh, got, has got me really, really worked up that I actually forgot about videos. So those who are wondering where my videos went, well, that's what happened. We I had tons of work to do, and I didn't see it go that way. Um, my view, I thought it was just as easy as just plug and play, you know, just, hey, here's the hardware, here's the schematic, print it out, I want a thousand pieces on this. No, 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 it's not as easy as that. Manufacturing for, uh, uh, designing for manufacturing is different from designing for prototyping, way different. And I got to learn that. And it's something that if you're going to become a hardware engineer, you're going to have to, to look into. So that at the end of the day, you don't want to be in a situation where you've started to, you've designed for just prototyping and not designed for uh, manufacturing. That has to be looked at from the white go. <clears throat> so that's what we worked on. And then we had variants we had to work on. Of course, as uh, we started out, the black box was just plainly and plainly for laptop tracking. But uh, as we went along, we had so many inquiries about people wanting tracking systems for DJ mixers, others wanting a tracking system for their fusion splices, others wanted for cars, others wanted for various items, uh, tracking their kids, others as spouses. We had People who have blood banks want their blood banks tracked as well as they want details on these vitals, you know, uh, what's the temperature of their blood, what's, 
uh, is it being well carried, especially, etc., etc. This details now made us realize as an IoT company, we need to work on innovation that uh, can adapt to any IoT landscape as quickly as possible and as best as possible. Another thing that we had to work on, of course, was the documentation now. Now, that was a large part as well, because uh, if you're going to do, say, an IoT system for laptops, you have to do documentation on how to install it in laptops. You have to do documentation on warranty. You have to do documentation on how it's used. You have to do documentation on uh, how each application, when to apply it, uh in in real life scenarios on the ground you have to do training manuals for resellers and uh, people who are going to do the actual installation you see all this documentation say is just for one thing that is for matrix black box uh, for laptops the matrix laptop black box you have to do this again for each one of them so if you're doing a dj mixer we have to do documentation for that if we are doing for vehicles we have to do documentation for that each has to be done entirely from scratch because the whole innovation was totally new and novel in its own way uh, that means uh, as much as we're developing uh, the hardware and the software part the documentation part also had to be in lockstep with all these two going on together. So as I said again, we, I had to be laid back a bit as the CEO of Matrix Black Box. I had to coordinate all these activities. I had to, most of the things I had to even do them myself uh, as well because uh, the hands-on experience I wanted out of it. Uh, so that when I, when, when I, when I have uh, people do that for me, I understand what needs to be done. Uh, not just staying back and paying people to do it. You need to know yourself uh, what's the process of going about this. When you're doing when you're doing manuals, what's the process of writing one? When you're doing um, the box design, uh, what's the process on that? What are the costs like? So that you can factor all this in the cost of production and understand how they fit in into the, the entire overall cost. Of course, at the same time, you have to innovate uh, so that you have all the costs lowered as best as possible, so that you, you, you don't have overheads of running the innovation. Because if you have very high overheads and you have very low sales as a startup, what happens is that your business will die. That's just plain and simple. Not just even for startups, even big businesses uh, collapse. You start to you have business is just running really really high on overheads things that it doesn't even need things that it's overpaying for and it doesn't realize until the whatever product that they're selling actually costs way overboard that even um, a normal client cannot afford it because they have factored in the overheads and the overheads have actually killed the entire thing um, it's quite interesting that I had to be Flanda on the ground um, the hard way and uh, the interesting thing is that most of my investors and um, partners that I worked with um, helped me learn this as, as I went. In fact, one of the first statements I ever learned when I was, uh, when I was dealing with one of my, uh, when I was dealing with my partner, told me, uh, overheads runs on two legs. Uh, at that point, I had no clue what he's talking about until I realized the two legs, those are people. So people can be a resource, but they could translate to overheads, way big overheads. You know, someone will just take their time to just even do something very small that takes five minutes. They just take two hours or two days to, to do it. And what happens is that at the end of the day, that is a factored cost. You learn that time is a factored cost not just the money factor but also time itself so if he takes no more time than normal means time to production also takes longer than normal 
which means optimizing times when people have high orders uh, becomes quite tricky because now if, if, if you can't deliver an order when it's actually needed the most, then what happens at the end of the day, uh, you lose out on that of sale as well. So I learned that, I learned a lot about covering overheads, keeping them as low as possible, factoring in different production aspects and elements, making the business more sustainable in model. Um, we even got spin-off uh, projects that came from the black box as well. Uh, one of the cool spin-off projects that you're probably going to hear about was uh, functional power generators that we had to develop so that we can cut down our electrical bills. Uh, since the cost of electricity in Kenya is so high, so you find if you're going to open a factory, the, uh, you're going to be run down by the cost of electricity itself, let alone the actual raw materials because uh, uh, the uh, people uh, in this country have put it in such a way that uh, they have attached very high taxes to the electrical bill. So at the end of the day, you find the cost of electricity itself is what is killing the innovation. So if I was to be asked, actually, that would be the first thing that they need to lower. But um, then again, in this country, sometimes nobody really gives a damn. And uh, we had to invent our own way of generating electricity. So by doing that, we cut down costs even further, which is quite cool. Uh, we'll put that innovation out there under Matrix Energy, which you're going to hear about uh, probably in a few, uh, few, uh, few weeks of time, in time, in time uh, as a spin-off company of ours. Um, we also got to learn a lot about um, health risks and health factors you need to consider when you're setting up a manufacturing farm. We learned a lot. In fact, we went overboard in learning. Uh, we learned even about nutrition. We learned a lot about how to work efficiently, sitting positions and postures as well on seats so that you don't have uh, the ergonomics of seats tiring you out as you're crunching in the code, um, doing walks as a company and running every time I'm, all, I'm, I'm usually jogging every thursday now every time and then so i can keep fit because when you have a fit body and have a fit mind then you're able to think otherwise if you're just always working and you're always stressed it's very hard to innovate so working out body exercise regular on that uh, healthy diet uh, good safety measures in the lab these are some of the things that we, we, we had to learn and teach ourselves in the process so that we created a culture of ourselves in, in the company. Uh, company culture is very important because remember, a company is like a human being. It has uh, needs uh, so that it's able to grow. Uh, just like a human being, of course, it can be sued and be sued back. So you need to understand your legal. You need to study a lot about legal. We had to learn a lot about that, uh, patent infringements and all that, and protecting ourselves uh, legally. Uh, also, we had to understand that companies, just like normal living organisms, they also produce waste. So how do you manage waste? We had to learn that. Um, I learned a lot about waste management, uh, recycling. So we got to build a culture of recycling within the company. So what happens is that with a culture like that, you, you're able to have a lot of self-sufficiency within the, the, the company. Because as, you, as you're working, waste has to be produced. It's part of the process. There's no company that can, uh, can do anything without uh, producing waste in some way, be it biodegradable or not. And I learned the best way possible is to find a use for this waste or ways in which you can uh, uh, work with other companies to reuse your waste. So a um, uh, waste of one thing can be the raw materials for another industry. So uh, by working with that principle, basically you can find yourself trading, uh, not necessarily in currency form, but uh, butter trading with uh, different companies 
in the waste you're producing, which can be part of the viable uh, uh, parts that they actually need in manufacturing something else. For example, if we're making something and we have paper as waste, we found companies that do paper mache in creating artworks out of them, and we give them for free uh, so they can create good artworks. At the same time, they don't need to, to go buy paper from scratch, which you see at the end of the day um, saves all these uh, waste problems that we have in the world currently. Uh, what I learned is that you're never too young as a company to actually deal with waste. Uh, whether you're 10 years old as a company like us, or you're a 50-year-old company, a 100-year-old company, uh, waste management is the first thing that I recommend that you, you, you need to look into when you're building a company of such nature. So we got to do that. I got to learn a lot about that and we developed that. Uh, yeah, so basically that's where I've been. I've been underground learning a lot of things, implementing a lot of things. And uh, some of these things, uh, you can only know and see what you're doing when you're here. Uh, being waiting for a video upload like this, probably have to do a 20 minutes or one hour plus video upload. Just to explain everything that we have learned and everything that we are willing to share as a company in the process of growing. Um, all in all, it has been an adventure and uh, now we are ready to do a lot of uh, videos like this. I'll be doing a lot of videos actually like this now from now henceforth. Uh, basically so that people can know our products exist and they are out there and uh, oh, we are willing to help many people out so that they can track their things with our IoT tracking system, the Matrix Black Box. Uh, if you're interested also in joining us, supporting us, uh, there are links below. You can support us on Patreon. There's a link somewhere there in the description. Uh, you can support us directly to our website. You can donate something. It's going to go a long way in funding uh, our, our innovations that we, uh, we want to bring to the market. You could be also an early stage uh, investor instead of investing in things that really are not going to change the world. We recommend that you invest in companies like this, which we believe in what we are doing is going to help make the world a better place. Um, all in all, um, I'm pleased to say that uh, Matrix Black Box is much well and alive. And, uh, I hope to be talking to you guys soon for more. Thank you and uh, have a good day.